what you just watched was an example of how you'll be able to play the piano while you sing if you follow the instructions on this video. Hello, my name is John Hefley. Now, if you like to sing, I'm going to try my best to teach you how to teach yourself to play the piano. Now, I've entitled this video An Introduction to the Piano and How to Teach Yourself How to Play Rhythm Piano by Ear. Now, first, let me explain the title. Most musicians who use this playing by ear method taught themselves in the comfort of their own home. Now, when you're in a teacher's studio, you sometimes feel nervous and time runs out too soon. And so this way, you can take all the time you want and not be embarrassed when you make a mistake. Now, I want to emphasize the word rhythm because on this particular video, I won't be showing you how to play instrumentals, just playing rhythm while you sing. In other words, no melody notes will be played. Now let me explain what the expression playing by ear means if you don't know. Playing by ear simply means playing while you hear or as you play make the piano sound like or in harmony with your voice. For instance when I played that song Your Cheating Heart I was reading a book but this book doesn't have any music in it. It's just the words. So I was trying to match my voice with my hands. And this is all done without you having to read sheet music. Now this method is an extreme shortcut in learning. Now there's four reasons by making this video. Number one, it seems like there's becoming an extreme shortage of musicians more and more so. Back about the turn of the century, there were some 3,000 different piano manufacturers and a piano in seven out of every 10 homes. Now there's less than a dozen manufacturers and there's about one piano on each block. And 50% of those who own pianos don't even know how to play them. Or they took a few lessons and lost interest because of having to do monotonous exercises and got bored reading notes. With this method, you will immediately start playing your favorite song. Now the second reason is just to prove to myself you don't have to take two or three years of lessons to learn to play the piano. And the third reason was because I have read this book, and I'll let you see the title to it. And this encouraged me make this video. Uh, the fourth reason, the fourth and main reason is just to share the joy of knowing how to play the piano with those who wish to learn the true natural way. Now there's two extra incentives for learning this particular method. You'll have a huge head start on learning to play the rhythm guitar and the bass guitar because with this method your left hand is playing the same notes a bass guitarist would play and your right hand is playing the same chords that a rhythm guitarist would play. So in a sense, this video is teaching you three instruments at once. The video is arranged mostly for the beginner, but it'll be helpful for those who only play in one key or those who are locked in the uh, only three chords per song syndrome. I want to show you how to add extra chords that will make your songs much prettier and I'll also show you how to play in all 12 keys. And by using this video as a guide there will be one big inconvenience. Now, your piano is probably backed up to a wall so you'll have to situate it so as you can put your TV in front of it. Now if you're thinking about using a keyboard it must have a sustaining pedal. Now, small lap keyboards uh, won't work very well. So now let's get started. While you get your piano and TV set up, <clears throat> I'll adjust my camera to where I can introduce you to the keyboard. Now, I hope this will be a launching pad that will get you started on a musical journey or will add some creativity to what you already know. The rest of this tape is going to be divided up into about six different parts. 
uh, part one will be for the extreme beginner who has never sat down before in front of a piano and then it gets more advanced on up through uh, part six uh, so if you uh, are acquainted with the piano some and know the notes and chords uh, you might want to fast forward it to whatever particular part that you want to uh, learn so to start out with uh, let me give you a little history of the piano when they first first developed the piano about 300 years ago uh, they wanted to put all white keys on it now when you start playing the piano you'll notice that the black keys are a lot harder to play with than the whites uh, but they they had to put them in there and here's the reason why if you had the piano has 88 keys total the whites and the blacks if all 88 keys were whites the piano would be almost twice as long and they found out about 300 years ago that you couldn't if you had had all white keys you couldn't play the piano at one setting and re be able to reach all the keys you'd almost have to be on roller skates to roll up and down to play the piano in one setting so they got the idea well why don't we uh, slide part of the keys kind of in the cracks between some of the white ones and make them a little more narrower and uh, that way we can compact the piano up to where you can play it in one setting within one's hands reach both hands reach so that's why the blacks are in there now this tape is uh, I'm the only one making this tape so it's going to be strictly unedited from here on out what you see is what you get. All the only thing I got to help me with is this little on and off button, which you'll see me pushing occasionally when I change to different parts and have to uh, change my camera. So, uh, and also my musical uh, vocabulary and and words and terms that I use may not be what you've read in the book. It's just my own personal vocabulary. So let's get started. Now the piano starts with the key of A. Now all you got to do is know your book, your uh, alphabet from A to G. That's all you need to know because the musical alphabet, that's as far as it goes, from A to G. So starting at the left hand side of the piano, con conveniently it starts with the key of A. It goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's as far as it goes in the alphabet. Then it just repeats itself. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to the right end of the piano. So that's all you need to know is A through G. And if you get lost on the piano, we'll just go to the left hand side of it and start counting up. Start saying the alphabet. Now, I don't, uh, the reason they put these series of two blacks and three blacks and two and three and so forth, I don't know the reason why except it makes it convenient to locate notes later on when you start playing. For instance, a C is always just to the left of a pair of two blacks. An F is always just to the left of a set of three blacks. Okay, now let me tell you what name, what you call these blacks notes. They're called flats or sharps, flats and sharps, either way you want to say it. They give them that name because, for instance, this first black note is called, you give it the name of the left, the neighbor to the left, or the neighbor to the right, the neighboring white note to the left or to the right. So you can call this first black note a sharp. Now, here's what sharp means. Sharp means that as you go from left to right, the sounds get sharper. If you go from right to left, the sounds get flatter. So, this first black note is just sharp, just sharp of A. So you call it A sharp. 
Now it is just flat of B. So you can also call it B flat. So consequently they are called flats or sharps. Just whichever one you want to call them. Doesn't matter. So A, B, C, this becomes C sharp or D flat. D sharp or E flat. Okay? Now, uh, now you know the notes. So now we're going to skip to go on to part two. And uh, part two will be, uh, I'm going to show you the three main chords in a song. So I've got to change the camera's position. Okay, now you're looking at the center of the piano. Most of the, your most of your chords will actually be playing played with your right hand. That's why I moved the camera. So, uh, in playing songs, a song will usually have three chords in it. They've uh, back uh, in the earlier music, like in the 30s and 40s, uh, they only had three chords in them. And still, nowadays, a lot of songs only have three chords. But now they have added some different chords to make the songs prettier and more creative. So later on in, in uh, the uh, uh, on this video I'll show you some more chords but for a while you need to just stick with three chord songs now a song will always have a home bass chord a uh, chord that it starts out in and uh, a chord that it in and it'll always come back to that same chord now a chord consists of three notes and you're, I'm going to learn you C, F, G chord. C, F, G chord. That's what usually everybody starts out playing uh, by ear in, <clears throat> in the key of C. What I mean by the key of C, by a song being played in a certain key, that means the key they start out in, the home base key, the key that it's written in, and the key it'll always end up back in. So during the course of the song, the, uh, the, the song will change from C to F to G's, not in any particular order. It just de depends on uh, how the song was written. So I'll explain that more later. <clears throat> okay, a chord consists of three notes. Now, we're going to use C as a home base chord. So you put your right hand thumb on C, and you skip one, put your next finger on an E, skip one, and put your index finger on a G. Now, if you play all three of those at one time, it becomes a C chord. Now, this is a C note, if you hit it individually, but if you include an E and a G with it, and you hit them all three at the same time, it becomes a C chord. Now here's your, your next chord, is an F. So, so put your thumb on an F. You always build from left to right. So put your thumb on an F, skip one, hit an A, skip one, and hit a C. Now that is an F chord. This is an F note, but with, by adding an A and a, a C to it, Get them together, it becomes a, an F chord. Now, the, the, the next chord and the last chord that you'll be learning for a while, this will get you all started to playing songs, is uh, the G chord. Now, it is conveniently located just one door to the right. So, if you move all three fingers to the right, you're in G chord. Thumb on a G. This finger on a B, index, index finger, or your middle finger, this is the index finger, it's on a, a B, and your middle finger on a D. Hitting them all at the same time becomes a G chord. Now when you're chording a piano, it's just about like uh, someone playing rhythm guitar. It's just a chop. A guitar player just plays like that. The rhythm, where you're going to do what I call a kind of a country chop. 
Okay, now you know what a cord is. Uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to move the camera and and show you what to do with your left hand. Now we're still in the the part two. Well, this this will go to part three. Because now I'm going to show you how to play rhythm. And this is the part you've been waiting for. Uh, you're going to play your first song. So we're going to go to part three, playing rhythm, piano, while you sing. And I'm going to move the camera to show you what you're going to do with your left hand while you're chording with your right hand. Okay, now this is going to be the most exciting part. This is when you're actually going to start singing and playing. <clears throat> okay, now here's what your left hand is going to be doing. Now, if you're a child and your hand is not completely uh, at its full size, like uh, uh, if you're like uh, 10 years or younger, you'll be uh, uh, doing differently from an adult. Now, while your hand or your right hand is chopping the chords, like C chord, Your left hand, put your left hand little finger on this C here, which will be the second C from the left hand side of the piano. Little finger. And your index finger is going to be playing a G. Now this is going to be called a country chop and uh, or country rhythm, and we're going to be playing what a friend we have in Jesus with this particular rhythm. Uh, so you, you start out usually playing rhythm piano with your left hand. So you start out with your little finger and you hit C, then you chop all three notes with your right hand, then your uh, left hand index finger hits this G, then you chop with your right hand. So what you're doing is you're alternating left hand, right hand, and and in between there, you're, you're alternating your left hand fingers and putting your right hand chop in between those. Now, that, now if you're a grown up and your hand is fully developed, you'll do it this way. You're going to hit two C's. This is what you call playing octaves. Playing octaves with your left hand. You're going to hit two C's at one time. And then you, your index finger uh, will still hit the G in the middle. So it'll be like this. Then you chop your right hand between those legs. Now we're getting ready to sing. First of all, let me tell you the whole secret of playing by ear, and it is this, is knowing when to change chords and what chord to go to. Now, what you do to start out with, you pick out a song that you want to sing, it don't matter any song. Uh, it's it would probably have to be in the popular field that has some uh, chords in it that are uh, got the three main chords. Uh, so what you do is you pick out a song and you hold down the key of C with your right hand and you harmonize your voice with this with your hand mm, like that. Mm, get your voice in harmony with your hand. Mm, now, assuming you know how to sing, and you know the words to the song. Now, I've got a, a book here with music in it, but I'm really just reading the words. All I want to know is the words, because I really can't read notes very well. So, what you do, get your voice harmonized for What a Friend. And then you start singing, and you come down on the first word with this octave lick with your left hand, the two C's, and then start chopping, and it'll sound like this. What a friend we have been. That's where you change to F. Jesus. Now you do the same thing in F. 
you chop your your right hand and your L, your left hand will be holding down two Fs and your index finger will be catching a, a, a C. Now, you don't really have to look for where your index finger is going to hit because the, the note that it's supposed to hit is always right underneath it. Now, let's back up and start again. Now, to learn, teach yourself to play rhythm is simply this. Uh, you play, you play that chord until, and sing with that chord until your voice is not in harmony with your hand. Then that tells you to change to a different chord. So you, you go shopping. You shop for F or G. Now, you only have two other chords, so you, you've got a 50% chance of guessing it and getting it right. Now, if you go to the wrong chord, it's going to sound wrong. Now, as, as long as you can tell bad music from good music, you ought to be able to, to play. So, if it sounds right, it is right. If it sounds wrong, we'll go shopping for another chord. Okay, now we're going to start again, and I'm going to go to the wrong chord. I'm going to go to G, which is wrong. Now, there's only, remember, there's only, I picked out a song with it, there's only three chords in it. Now, uh, I'm going to go to the wrong chord. Well, first of all, I'm going to not even change chords at all. I'm just going to keep on playing and you listen how bad this starts sounding. Sounded pretty good until I got to the word Jesus and I, I should have changed. Now I'm going to go to the wrong one. Terrible. Okay, now I'm going to go to the right one. Back to home base. All our friends and grief to bear. I to G. What a privilege to might have a question like uh, which direction should I go with each hand in, in going to different chords? Well you can go either way you want to, whichever sounds best to you. Uh, normally uh, your hands uh, probably should go in the same direction. Like if you want to go change C to an F chord well, and go to the right, we'll move your right hand to the, to the right. We'll move your both hands in the same direction, but you don't necessarily have to. I can go up here and catch an F. And I can go down here and catch an L. So that's that's the way you play a rhythm piano on your, and you can pick out uh, any song you want to. And we're going to play some different songs in a moment. We'll probably go through several different songs, but uh, I'll go ahead and play this one completely through, and call out the the letter that you change. The, the, the chord that you go to on one complete verse and chorus. Okay. In the key of C. There's an L. Back to home base. Folks, this is going to be unedited. That was uh, Jason, my little 10 year old boy that uh, interrupted me. Open the door.
scream something. Uh, that reminds me, I'm going to have him come in here and play in just a moment. And I'll show you how he plays. Uh, I give him about a 30 minute lesson and he started playing immediately. Okay, and I'll go back over the course. Goes to G. Oh. probably all you'll ever use your whole life. Uh, maybe I'll get a chance to explain the other two pedals later on. But uh, you change, uh, you hold down on the pedal while you're holding the chord down, while you're in that one particular key. Now you let up on the pedal and mash it back down when you change chords. All you do with a pedal. Now I'm going to go get Jason and see if I can get him to sing and play what a print uh, the way he plays. Our old boy Jason, uh, he's going to play what a print we have in Jesus. Now his left hand, he usually just plays, a, uh, uh, he don't play octaves, so you'll notice that. Okay, Jason. playing a different rhythm so I told him to, to play the rhythm I'm showing you right now so okay here you go Jason start again from Jason, uh, you can kind of see uh, what it sounds like to play rhythm piano by ear. Now granted, if you just play those chords without singing, it sounds very not monotonous. So uh, uh, there's a lot of songs, uh, especially the older songs, that you can practice with, uh, with just those three chords in it, C, F, and G. Like for instance, uh, I wrote some down here. Uh, you play Water Friend, uh, Precious Memories, uh, Country Song, Walk on the Floor, Green, Green Grass of Home, uh, hundreds of others. Now, the book I use, my most popular book, is one that's got about 200 songs in it and uh, it's only got uh, the words to the songs like I'm turned to Bobby McGee me and Bobby McGee right there I'll sing a little bit of this <clears throat> so if you're just playing rhythm it's without singing it sounds pretty monotonous but you put the uh, start singing with that <clears throat> rhythm and it sounds more normal. Busted flat in Baton Rouge, headed for the train, feeling nearly faded as my jeans. She caught a poppy thumb on the piece of down just before it rained. Took the song all the way to New Orleans. That's all you do. You just don't. Uh, just practice and uh, if you hit the wrong chord that means you go to the other chord. 
the F doesn't sound right, go to G. And uh, on the next uh, part, I'll be showing you uh, the fourth most popular additional chord. And that's, that is for uh, musicians that uh, only play using three chords. Uh, I'll try to get them out of that syndrome. There's some people that, that only uses three chords their whole life. Well, there is other chords to, to put in the song, <coughs> excuse me, that'll make the song a lot uh, prettier and actually the way it should be played because since about 1950, they started adding more than three chords to it. So that'll be in part uh, four. And uh, also in part four, I'll probably uh, show you uh, how to do some uh, walks with your left hand. Uh, the bass guitar walk licks, for instance, like this on me and Bobby McGee. Busted black moon batting room, headed for the train. Feeling nearly faded as my dream. Bobby thumbed the diesel down just before it rained. Took us all the way to New Orleans. To walk back from C to L, from C to G. that a bass guitar player would be playing. So that's why you'll be learning three different instruments when you learn this particular technique. This particular rhythm here that with your right hand is just about the same timing a rhythm guitarist would play. So you're going to learn three instruments at once. Okay, let's go to uh, Part uh, four, and I'm going to show you that additional chord that's, uh, that will make your song more complete when a song calls for the fourth chord. Okay. In some songs, there's more than three chords in them. Uh, there is a fourth chord. A lot of people Plays, have played the piano for several years and are real good pianists, but yet they only use three chords in a song. And uh, you need to be able to know uh, and use that fourth chord. And I'll give you an example. Uh, we'll go back to Your Cheating Heart. That's got a, the four chords in it. And we'll now I'll chord with my, uh, just my, you may not be able to see my left hand, but I want you to see my right hand mostly. Now I'll play it with just three chords, and this is the way some pianists would play, and just ch and simpli simplify it into three chords, which is wrong, it should have four. Uh, actually, you go to the fourth chord in the uh, chorus, you don't use a fourth chord in the, uh, the uh, first verse, but I'll go from the from the top. You're cheating hard. We'll make you weak. You'll cry and cry and try to sleep. And see, but sleep won't come the whole night through. L. You're cheating hard. G. We'll tell. Now here it goes to the chord, and get ready for that. Now I'll leave that fourth chord out. When tears come down, there's a like falling rain. You toss around. Then right there is for the fourth chord should have been on the word round, and a lot of pianists will skip that and just leave it out. And call my name. Now I'll do it correctly. And the fourth chord, I never have told you what it is, but the fourth chord is D, right there. Now D consists of a black note, so you'll have to start getting used to the black note. Can you see it? It's a thumb on a D, 
index finger on a F sharp and uh, your middle finger on an A. That's what I'm going to go to on the word around. When tears come down to doing it and there is one uh, rule that is is always uh, and that is when you do go to the D chord when you're playing in the key of C if you ever go to the D car D chord G chord will always follow now that is an absolute rule when to You walk the floor the way I do. You're cheating the hard jeans. Well, tell on you. Okay, I backed the camera up to different positions so to make sure that you can see my left and right hand. I'm going to that fourth chord. You're cheating hard. teacher makes some mistakes occasionally, so I made a mistake then. You'll cry and cry and try to sleep, but sleep won't come the whole night through. You're cheating hard, will tell on you. When tears come down like falling rain. I'm going to that D, the fourth card. You walk around. Now, on your left hand, you hit just D octaves and play the index finger on A. And call my name, go to G. All G always follows D. You walk the floor. Occasionally you'll see me just playing this way. This is the way a little boy would play it when their when their hand's not fully developed. Or play octaves. Okay. Now, if you noticed I was doing some walks with my left hand then. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, your cheating heart to show you how to do walks with your left hand. This is while a bass guitar would be doing the same thing. And uh, also, I forgot to tell you in the first part of the tape, when you're starting out on a song, uh, you gotta know what word to start playing on. Some songs you start on the very first word, like what a friend we have in Jesus. Start on the word what, but on your cheating heart, you start on the word heart. So you get your voice harmonized, and then you, you'll start with your left hand. You go down on the word heart. You're cheating heart. Now take your left hand, and you can walk walk octaves, or you can walk just one finger and walk up to L. Will make you win. You cry and cry and try to see. And then, if you want to, you can go to G and wind yourself up to get ready for the next verse. But sleep won't come. See that? Walk from G up to home base. But sleep won't come. Finger, nine, your cheating heart will tell on you. When tears 
tears come down, when tears come down, gonna help down. going in the back door instead of going G direct going to D D as in Denver this you can go that way it sounds better to, put, to go from the other side of D and come in and come in from the back door when like this again when Wind up from G and go back to, to home base. You walk the floor the way I do. You cheat the heart, you tell me. Uh, jingle bells. That song has a, the fourth chord in it too. So I'm gonna play it, play it and sing it, and uh, and talk the chords as I, and tell you the chords as I go. Uh, okay, jingle bell. Now, if you'll notice, when you're singing, like myself now, um, of course my voice don't sound very good in no time, but uh, uh, your voice will sound better in certain chords. So while you're learning in C, uh, you'll just have to be uh, be patient and har and get and just keep trying to harmonize in C. Uh, because uh, later on I'll show you how to play in all 12 chords and then you can match the piano to your voice. But right now you've got to uh, learn in C as home bass. Actually Jingle Bell was written in the key of F and it would sound better in F. But I'm going to do it in C because that's what I'm learning to play in is C. Okay, Jingle Bell. Jingle Bell. made it into a three chord song because that's what a lot of people do. Now I'm going to play it right and I'm going to put the fourth chord in it. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Walk to F. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse. Right there. On the word one, go to D. One horse, open sleigh, go to G. Always go to G when right after D. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one north open sleigh. Now that's all of the verse, and then you go to the chorus. Now actually, the chorus doesn't have uh, the fourth chord in the chorus. Dashing through the Ride, ride and slay in a slaying cone tonight. Back to home base on the word night. Oh, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Walk down. Oh, what fun. Back to home base. It is to ride in one horse. There's that D as in Denver. One horse open sleigh. called part five and it's I'm going to introduce you to two real creative chords that'll go along with the, the the four chords that you already know now they are called a minors and seventh now first of all the chords that I've already shown you are called just major chords 
a C major. Now, there's two other uh, chords uh, that you need to learn, and that's all you'll need to learn uh, in playing most most musics. And they are what they call a minor chord and a seventh chord. They are actually uh, derivatives of the major chord. So let me show you how to make a, a minor chord. A minor chord, simply, you move your index finger one note to the left and leave your other two in place. So your, your C major, I move this index finger to the left, one note, and that, that counts blacks and whites, whatever happens to be, that's the first note to the left, so I'm going to hit it. And you hit these three at the same time and it becomes a C minor. C minor. Now a minor in itself is kind of an a eerie sound. It's an exciting sound. It's kind of like the wind blowing. It's kind of like a, a Halloweenish ghostly sound. But when you put it in the context of the song, which I'll show you later, uh, it'll sound beautiful. Now, the other chord is called a seventh. And so if you want to make a C seventh, you simply do this. You move your thumb two notes to the left, leaving your other two fingers in place. Two notes, one, two. So it be, it's kind of hard to, to do. You just slide these fingers up between the blacking and leave them on the same note. And that is a C seventh. C major. Seventh. See, I'm leaving these two in place. And that, that is what they call a C7. Now, uh, we'll, we'll go back to your cheating heart again, and it will use a seventh in it. Now, okay, let me go back and show you this. Now, you can, you can make any chord a minor or a seventh by using that same rule. Like F, just move your middle finger one note to the left, leave the other two in place, index finger, F, F minor, F, F7, okay, G, G minor, G, G7, I'm sorry, G7 was, was this in here, count two notes with your thumb. wanted to make a, a D seventh, you go, or D minor first, here's D chord, D minor, D, D seventh. So any chord, any of the twelve that I'll be showing you later, if you want to minorize them or make, make them seventh, just use that same rule I showed you when, I, when, when making C. Okay. Now, here is a place that you can you can use sevenths in just about every song. Now, you don't you get a chance to use the minors in every song, but here in, in your cheating heart. Let me see if the, just the camera again. Maybe watch me use these sevenths and make this cheating heart sound better. Mm. Now, you use a seventh, especially C seventh, as kind of a of a place to, it's kind of like pushing in on the clutch, getting ready to shift from C to L. It gives it a, a, a much smoother uh, transition from C to L. It's kind of like uh, getting the gear synchronized. So right when I think I'm getting ready to go to L, especially on a slow song, well I will hit C7. Okay. You're cheating hard. Now I know I'm getting ready to go to F, so I'm going to hit C sevenths right after heart. You're cheating hard. With, and then I walk with my left hand. Make you win. You cry and cry. Or G.
seven. And you can also, to make it even sound better, if possible, hold down that home bass note with it and cover two keys with your two notes with your left with your right hand. G G7. This way. R. Hold them both down to even sound better. And call my name. And walk back to home. You'll walk with me. Jesus. What a friend. See, I'm getting ready to go to F. So I hold my C7 down. See what I'm doing? I'm sliding these two fingers forward, leaving them on the same note. that seven. You have to hit the seven. It just uh, it makes this, the song sound much better, and it also helps your voice. <laughs> Back in the 50s and 60s, they come up with this this progression of chords, and it's this: C, A minor. Now to get this A minor, all you got to do is move your hands two notes to the left, all white keys, so move all fingers, every other one, C, A minor, so your, F would, your left hand would be just hitting A's too, okay, C, A minor, F, and G, C, A minor, Through the 50s and 60s, they used that progression, and they probably was a thousands of songs written and very popular songs. Most of them rock and roll and love songs. Uh, a lot of them hit the top ten, and some of them were number one. Uh, I found one right off the, the searching through the music. I found this one here, but and we'll do this, and it's where have all the flowers gone? And you use that uh, that particular progression all the way through the song. that uh, I had a different particular rhythm on that one. Uh, I was going to go ahead and say that 
rhythm for a, a, a next part, but I'll go ahead and show it to you. It's simply, you, you make double chops. With your right hand, you're doing double chops. Okay, now I'm going to stop for the moment and we're going to part five or part six and that's when I'm going to show you uh, how to use the pedal if I haven't already showed you. And I'm going to show you uh, about four more different, three or four more different particular rhythms. And uh, then after that, uh, I'm going to... Uh, play probably about 10 or 15 songs and I'm gonna, I'm gonna name out the chord as I go, go to them and then we'll go from there. three kinds of chords. And that's all you'll ever need to know. It's major, C major, C seventh, C minor. That's all you need to know. Okay, I want to show you one more rhythm. <clears throat> I just thought of another rhythm to show you. Let me check the camera angle. Okay, seems to be okay. Now this is one, this actually is the hardest one to learn. This is one that I don't use very well. I'm still working on it. Polishing it up. But I'm not very good at it, but I'll show it to you. It's what most of the professional pianists do. Uh, it's, it's, the left hand is, is the one that creates this particular rhythm. And it's called octave chord. You hit a double, you hit the octaves, two C, and you go all the way down here, <clears throat> and you chord. You can roll the chord out, starting with this finger right here, the middle finger, and roll that chord out. At the same time, <clears throat> Your hand, right hand, is just chording. So it'll be like this. What a friend we have in hardest one was the hardest one for me to learn and I'm still uh, not used to it very well but it's simply this actually you don't have a chance to touch this last note it's like this gives the sound of the song a more uh, harmonious or more acoustical more bass to the to the song adds a more bassier sound to it so instead of like I showed you a while ago you were doing this 
now you're doing this. It gives a more bass sound. Now, on this particular method, you got to watch your hands or they'll be running together. Because this left hand has a, a quite a bit of a range to it. It goes from here all the way down into here. So this particular method you want to be sure and not run your hands together. Just keep your right hand playing to the right a little more. Now I want to show you how to play in any chord on the piano, in any note on the piano. Uh, the uh, when people write music, they will put their particular uh, home base key that they wrote it in. They wrote this one in the key of A flat because it's got four flats. But, uh, sometimes a, a singer has, according to their voice, uh, would like to play it in a different different uh, key. Now, like I've been teaching you in C so far, I and mean, it should have been in A flat. <clears throat> so, now let me show you how to play in any key. It's very simple. Now, first I'll show you how to create a chord. Now, all I've showed you is CF, G's, and D's, and so forth. But say, for instance, I wanted you to make a uh, uh, E chord. You just simply put your thumb on an E note, and creating this sound, my dog has fleas. Up to C. My dog has so, but just put your thumb on the chord root that you want to make, and and and, uh, and work to the right, and build the chord until it sounds just like you made C sound. C, E. Now that is uh, learning to uh, make the chords by ear. Now if you want a formula, if you can't figure it out by ear, it's simply you can go back to the key of C and see what you did in the key of C and counting is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the formula for making a chord is 1, 5, and 8. And then add that to high C up here. <clears throat> so. If you can't figure it out by ear, you just count. Put your thumb on an E and count. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. And then you're looking for eight. Six, seven, eight. There's an E chord. If you want, if you want to make an E flat, thumb on E flat, play a one note, five note, and eight note. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Now, that's the way you learn how to form a chord. <clears throat> now, if you want to know uh, what chords that goes with each home base <clears throat> key, uh, the formula is you can go back to the what you where you're playing C and figure out what you did when you went to F and G. So, like I was telling you, a song will have usually have three different chords, It'll have like C, F, and G, or you can put a number on them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. It's one, six, and eight. <clears throat> That's the formula. <clears throat> 
for figuring out the associate partners for each home base key is 1, 6, and 8. Therefore, playing in the key of D, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, G, 7, 8, 8. So the associate chords for the playing in the home base key of D would be A and G. So therefore, if I want to play What a Friend in the key of D, I would play it like this. Start chopping. What a friend we have in G. By going to D, I move to the right one. Well, I move my associates over one. So therefore, you can figure out what the associate chords for are for any key by just going back and seeing what you've done in the key of C and, and using the counting method. Uh, transfer to the chord that you want to play in. So your, your chord partners are always 6 and 8, 1, 6, and 8. And then you got to count the black ones too. <clears throat> Same way if you're going to play in a, in a sharper flat, like for instance, say A flat. <laughs> Harmonize your voice in A flat. <laughs> was one, two, three, four, five, six. D flat. All our friends and griefs to bear. Now actually, what a friend was written in the key of F. So here is what the songwriter suggested. <clears throat> what he wrote the song in F. The, the associate keys are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. B flat, seven, eight, C. <laughs> okay, now I will show you a little bit about playing instrumentals, which is the same way as you're learning to play rhythm, if only, only you don't sing the melody note, you play the melody note with your right hand. Now, in this playing instrumentals, you will definitely have to teach yourself uh, the melody notes. So, before you try to put play it with two hands, uh, first of all, you you uh, figure it out with the, your right hand by just playing the melody note to start out with. And you got to you got to find the first note of the song so you can get it started right. Uh, the opening note, the first note of the song will be usually be one of the uh, notes in the C chord. Like on what a friend. You try to figure it out by ear which is going sounding right. Then after you got after you're satisfied that you got that right, then you put your right hand with it. And you try to play your right hand rhythm like I showed you a while ago while you play the melody notes. And then you try to figure out when to change keys with your left hand. And uh, you change keys just like you were singing. Whenever your right hand don't match your left, 
then you know you've got to change to L for G. So here it is. I'll do it wrong. Start out with it. I won't change. It's a good sound. Here it is. Here's the correct change. It goes to L. Also get a little bit better and uh, I'll show you some more <clears throat> another time uh, if I have room on this tape I'm going to also include uh, uh, how to uh, what to look for in uh, buying a piano and show you how piano works I'm going to take the camera and show you the inside of the piano and show a homeowner how to take care of a <clears throat> care of a piano <clears throat> So I'll sign off by playing a little bit of a song here. Let's see what would I play for you. How about uh,
<coughs> now, let's try it in the key of L, which is actually what, what a friend has wrote in the key of L. Okay, here's one. I'm going to figure out the partners first. One, two, three, four, five, six. B flat is one of the partners. Seven, eight. C is the other partner. One, six, eight. Now there is your tools to work with. That's your chords, on bass and your associate chord. Okay, now let me show you a neat sound, another neat sound to do. We'll go back to the key of C. This is what I call going in the back door. When you are uh, playing in the key of C and you come to the position of going to G, you walk into it like this with your left hand. It would sound like that. Okay, I went through about all the secrets and all the techniques that I've picked up in about 20 years of playing, and I don't consider myself a very good piano player, but I do know most of the theory behind playing by ear. So uh, you practice all that you've seen on this tape and uh, see how you come out. Uh, I think that you'll enjoy playing by ear. Most of all, it it frees up your your eyes to where you can look the audience in the face. You don't have to stare and have to try to read music all the time. And uh, your uh, your listeners will get the message of the song better if you can look them in the eye while you while you sing. Uh, So try this tape out and uh, see how you like it and call me on the phone and let me know uh, if I've helped you any. Uh, if I can help one person learn how to play the, pi play the piano, it will be worth the whole endeavor of making this tape. Thank you very much.